Hello everyone, this is the Kingfisher edit in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 2020, so any any version of Photoshop really, uh, Photoshop Elements is, will obviously be slightly different. Uh, you do need a Camera Raw filter installed for what I'm going to do. You can check if you've got the Camera Raw filter installed by going to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and you'll see it's there. If you don't have a photo open, it'll be grayed out, but that's fine, it's still there. It needs to be a fairly latest version. Uh, the very latest version as I'm doing this is version 14. You need, probably need something from version 10 upwards. I will put a link to the Adobe Camera Raw Filter downloads from the Adobe website in the description of the video. Uh, depending on your version of Photoshop, you may not be able to uh, download and install the, the latest version. It may not work with your version of Photoshop. That's a lot of versions, but um, I hope you understand what I mean. Okay, so let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is open a JPEG. We're going to be using a JPEG and we're going to open the JPEG in Camera Raw. So I'm just going to open this so we can see what the before photo is looking like. We're then going to File Open As. Now, if you open this photo in Camera Raw, you can do that. You can do your changes. You, you, you then say Done, OK, or Done. And all your changes will be on your screen. If you want to go back to Camera Raw to do adjustments to your uh, little edit, all those adjustment settings are gone. Everything's gone back to naught. So if you do want to do slight tweaks, that's the way to do it. Open in Photoshop and open it. Just camera raw filter there. But you will lose all your adjustment settings. So we're not going to do that. We're going to go File, Open As. And we're going to choose Camera Raw here. It's this long string of thingies there. Okay. Kingfisher to edit. And if you just give your computer or Photoshop a couple of seconds, the camera raw filter window will oh there we go it's going to stop and there it is you can just make it a little bit bigger it should default to this first setting here it's called basic sometimes it defaults to that but always click on the basic there and this is your holistic whole image changes here okay we're going to do a little bit of that at the top of the screen here you'll see all sorts of fascinating things we're going to be using the brush and we're going to be using the radial filter okay so just for now we're going to um, do the whole image now when you're looking at a photo th the thing you've got to ask yourself is where is the light this is a wonderful image it's sharp enough we're not going to do sharpening uh it bird's got a little bit of an attitude it's just sitting on a stick but there's something really special about this but where is the light if you're entering in a competition this would be nature stroke wildlife so very basic editing is allowed to so the dodging, the burning, the lightning, the darkening kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to add quite a bit of exposure here. The one thing you've got to watch is this section here. You don't want that to burn out and it's just starting to lose there. But we are going to be using the brush tool and we're going to get some of that back. So exposure somewhere around there, I'm even going to pull it back to about 0.55 there. We want to get rid of a couple of shadows. We're going to be using the brush, but just a holistic thing, somewhere around 2022, 20, and then highlights somewhere around that. I do this for most images. Okay, it's bright enough. We're now going to go up here to your brush. Now, when you click on your brush, it's going to default to whatever you used last time. You click here on the three little stripes, and you say reset local correction settings, and everything goes back to naught. If you do move something, and you want to get it back to, you don't have to fiddle like, oh, I can't get naught. You just double click on the triangle and it goes back to naught. Okay, whatever you do, you double click on the triangle, it goes back to naught. All right, so adjustment brush, you are new. What I want to do is this area here. So I want to take away a little bit of exposure and a little bit of highlights. Okay, so whatever you do here, you, we're then going to brush it in. And then you can go and change it and you can see the results as you're working. It's wonderful. The size brush, if you go down to the bottom, uh, you can change the size here if you want. Okay. Or on your keyboard, 
close bracket, uh, sorry, open bracket makes it smaller and close bracket makes it bigger. So open bracket, close bracket. So just fiddle on your keyboard a little bit. The feather, uh, somewhere around 50%. The, the solid black line is the size and the dotted line is where it feathers to. Density is just, uh, always put that on 100. Okay, so we're here, that's about the right size. Look back to our settings, a little bit less exposure, taking away a couple of highlights, and we're just going to brush here a little bit. So we just a little and go a little bit smaller just to get in there a bit. So that's the area that we then we're worried about. Okay, now you can then see that's what happens. Okay, you don't want that. So let's go back. We just want a little bit there. But if you go too much, it starts going grey. So that's the reason you see I've gone over a little bit there and I'll show you how to get rid of that so just fiddle not too much I want gray a little bit of highlights mm, actually worried it's going a little bit gray there so just pulling back a bit there okay I've gone over that there so with the same brush hold your alt key down and it deletes that part there Okay, you can see it's gone now. Okay, there's still a little bit there that I want to work on, but I don't want to work on those other parts. So now I'm going to go new, and I'm going to work on that part again. There we go. See, isn't that looking better? So you layer in your brushes as you go along. And I kept the everything the same there. I think that's looking really good. We're now going to go back to new. We're going to reset all our settings. And I want to work on these dark areas here. So we want a little bit more exposure. We want to take away some shadows. So let's make the brush a little bit bigger and then just start brushing in here. Okay. A little bit on the tail here, but that's not really serious. We're going to be doing this area with the radial tool. Okay. So now, when you see something like that, it means you've gone too far. It starts getting really noisy. And if it's a solid black, you'll see it starts going green. Okay, you obviously don't want that. So let's pull this back. Just want to get a little more detail there. Maybe add a little bit of clarity. Now clarity brings out um, the, the texture of the feathers and all that. You've, if you've got a latest version of Camera Raw, you see you've got this lovely texture one as well. So you can play with that as well. Not too much. Remember we're just doing tweaking because this is a nature image. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Anything else for brushes? No, I think everything looks good. We're now going to use the radial filter, which is the most incredible thing. Use it for every single eye that comes onto your screen. Okay. If this is the first time you're using it, it is going to default to the outside. We don't want it to default to the outside. Click on the inside. So when we draw it, and you can adjust it, and you can change it, and you can move it, so whatever we want i'm just going to do some really weird things here like exposure we don't want the outside okay that's a very useful tool um but we want the inside and feather is always about half quite happy with that okay so we want that to just go to back to we haven't decided how we want so kind of get the size of the eye you can move it in there get it more like that okay up into the eye all right and we just want to add a little bit okay you don't want to go mad just a little bit something like 65 and then I always add a little bit of saturation there because it's usually lovely these lovely brown eyes just add a little bit in there a little bit of contrast okay just take away we don't want it to go light we still want it to pop okay so that's about it you then put your mouse over there you right click and you duplicate it and you move it over there to the other eye okay so <laughs> that looks really weird so that's what we're doing okay i think that's pretty good i'm happy with everything there okay now to get back all your settings are still on the radial because we're still doing radial to get back to the holistic just click on the zoom tool there and you're back to the holistic picture I'm going to add a little bit of contrast overall, 
Um, some professionals say never to use the contrast tool, but yeah, you know, I don't really follow the rules. I quite like that. And we're now going to take it into Photoshop. And the one thing we're going to do in Photoshop is levels. Levels in Photoshop is magnificent. You can now click on Open Image. It opens it in Photoshop. But the only way you can then get back to all these settings and the camera raw filter is to then click on the top of Photoshop, filter, camera raw filter, and then all your settings are gone. Okay, so you've got to open this. You see, yeah, open as a normal image, alt click to open without updating, shift click to open as a smart object. So I'm going to press the shift button, and this changes to open object, and we're now going to click. You'll see this is now a smart object. Okay. If you want to get back to camera raw, you double click on there. Wait a few seconds, and it opens, and all your settings are there, and then you can then go and tweak if you change your mind. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is save this now. File, save, and it defaults to a PSD file because it's a smart object, and that is absolutely perfect. Just save it like that, and if you ever need to go back, you would find this PSD file. You can rename this if you want, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the PSD thing. Control L is levels. This is a magnificent tool in Photoshop. Take it to the side here. If you want to see what it's going to look like, you just preview there. I always use this middle one, and I just bring it over a little bit like that, and it makes everything pop. So like, there we go. See what I mean? Just starts popping now. It's really just a contrasty tool. We're going to say OK there. Now look at the before, and look at the after. What a difference. Okay, we've done no saturation, but look at the colors now are really popping. But it still has a really nice natural feel about it. Okay. If you now want to enter this, I'm going to save again now. If you want to enter this into competition, you right click here and you just say flatten image, file, save as, and I always just call it flat. Change this to JPEG. Okay. And save. If you upload into Photovolt, this of course is going to be less than two. You can see yes it is. And press OK. Alright, so you have your before, which got a 12 gold in a competition. And now I'm sure it will get some more. This is Diane Backhouse's photo from Marisburg Camera Club. Thank you Diane for allowing me to use your image. I hope these edits have helped. Peace out.